Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Brandon Silvera. Thanks for being on the show, Brandon. Howdy, how are you? Great. I'm pleasure to have you. I was just telling Brandon that he he's he has a superpower that I think I don't think we've had on the show yet, uh, in in a unique skill uh, that I'm I'm really looking forward to diving into today, and I think it's going to open uh, a lot of the listeners' minds to to a new type of investment or a new option out there that that you may not be familiar with. Uh, but a little about Brandon. He is a fourth generation farmer and has bought and sold millions in real estate. Currently manages over 100 million in assets. His specialty is in farm management, land acquisition, and a variety of farm and land financing strategies. He's passionate about bridging the gap between the farm and the consumer, which led him to launch Farm Funder, which makes investing in farmland simple. So Brandon, you got to fill us in a little bit and, and, you know, maybe back up and tell us, you know, how this happened, how this came about and, and uh, let's dive into really what this is and just the opportunity that's, that's there for uh, all of us that we don't even know about. Sure. Um, I think like a lot of things uh, pop up out of necessity. Um, so I started my farm uh, pretty much from scratch and uh, started building it up, building it up and realized that we need more capital and we need uh, better options. Um, so when, uh, when I, when the jobs act first came out and, and crowdfunding had became a, a, a thing, uh, equity crowdfunding, I, I kind of knew at that time that this was really big for farming. So, uh, you know, I thought to myself, how cool would it be to be able to get investors to invest in farmland with farmers that know the land, know how to farm, uh, know what they're doing and get a good return for the investors, you know, who get to, you know, own this property and get to see the appreciation of this property. And at the time it just wasn't being done on a, a, a scale that normal investors could invest in. It was being done on large scales, pension funds, uh, things of that sort, but just not where a normal investor could invest in. And, and I knew it could be, uh, it could be huge. So that's kind of what led me on this path. So what kind of farming were you doing? Say before you, you know, the, before the Jobs Act, what kind of farming were you doing specifically and what type of operation are we talking about? So uh, uh, we're in uh, Central California. So uh, we're growing a lot of almonds, walnuts, grapes, uh, uh, nut crops are, are, are a great investment right now. But we also have some row crops and we've, we've dabbled with uh, organic tomatoes, uh, processing tomatoes, garlic, onions, um, um, uh, cow feed, things of that sort, uh, corn and, and uh, alfalfa, uh, pretty good around these parts. So we, uh, you know, that's that's kind of our focus. We we really like the uh, permanent crop and the vineyard uh, model. Seems to be a, a good return, but uh, that's that's kind of our sweet spot. Okay. So, so you were doing that and then, then you realized you, you needed capital and you, and you could raise capital. I love how you talked about, uh, you know, it's a so similar thought process to what we do in multifamily. It's just like, you know, investors are investing with operators that know what they're doing uh, right. because they don't have the time to go develop that skill most of the time and, and to operate the deal, operate the property. Uh, and it seems so similar here to where you're the expert. And we're sure. ultimately investing in you and your skills, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because, uh, you know, like a, like a lot of things, uh, if you if you buy a piece of property, uh, they want you to personally guarantee, say, uh, uh, the, the building or whatever you're buying, and they want to encumber your other uh, real estate, right? Well, in farming, you know, imagine having a farm that's been in your family for a hundred years, and you want to buy the farm next door. But doing that, you have to have the risk of encumbering all of your family's farm that have been, you know, for 100 years, and you might lose that someday. Um, and you may not want to take on that risk. So, you know, the thought process is, you know, why not have the ability for investors to come in and, and invest with the farmer where he doesn't take on so much risk, but yet he's 
familiar with the ground because it's next door or the soil is familiar and he's already growing those crops. Um, so it, it really fits the, the whole syndication type of a, a model fits so good with agriculture. And in my personal opinion, I think we're just kind of, this is just the start. Yeah. Seems like this kind of, this thing that's just kind of unknown, right? I mean, or people or if the first time they do hear about it, maybe they're a little fearful, but they're just uneducated maybe. I think there's a, I think there's a learning curve for sure. I think there's a learning curve on both ends. Uh, you know, when you talk to farmers about bringing investors on, um, you know, uh, the first thing a farmer says, well, I don't want someone from the city telling me how to farm. It's like, well, that's not how it works, you know? <laughs> and then when you talk to investors about investing in farmland, you know, can, you know, telling them that, Hey, you know, you're going to get paid once a year instead of every month. There's a learning curve there too. And, and that, and that uh, profit, you know, from your investment changes every year, uh, depending on uh, weather and, and how, how good those crops do. So what, what we do is not a, uh, uh, we don't lease uh, back to a farmer. Uh, the investors are invested with the farmer in those crops, uh, which helps us to see a higher return for the investors. Tell me elaborate on that a little bit there, mm -hmm. as far as leasing, you talked about you're not leasing back, uh, you to explain like why that would be a problem so we understand um well it's, it's not a problem so it's pretty it's pretty common the, i would say the uh what most people uh most institutional investors and, and a lot of investors do when they want to invest in agriculture they go out and they buy a farm they lease it to a farmer that farmer pays uh uh you know x amount of dollars per acre and it's paid once a year um, not a lot of risk. It's pretty safe, uh, which is good. But your returns, you know, tend to be lower, you know, to two or three percent return on your money um, and, and then whatever appreciation you get from that farm. Now, that farmer who's farming that is obviously needs to make a profit farming and pay you the rent. So we're kind of capturing that profit from the farmer. Um, but you're also getting that risk. But, you know, so if you're going to farm, say, almonds is what we're what we're big into over here. You're going to own the trees with the farmer. The farmer's going to own the trees. It's all going to be in an LLC. And if those trees make 13%, you know, you're going to make 13% uh, instead of just getting the rent and the appreciation. Um, we think it's pretty safe. We think the risk is definitely worth the reward doing it this way. Um, so that, that's kind of our model compared to traditional models. So you mentioned like uh, being paid once a year and it's kind of a learning curve there as well. Um, you know, I, I, I could completely understand why that is that way, but maybe you could elaborate for those that, you know, don't really understand the, the farming process. Sure. So, you know, we're, we're, uh, uh, for example, in an almond or, or a, an almond orchard or a vineyard, um, right now we're farming for a harvest that's going to be in the fall. Um, and we're going to sell that product and probably get paid after the first of the year uh, in, in 2021. Um, you know, there's no uh, monthly income. It's just kind of when you sell the uh, when you sell the product that you grow, that's when you get paid. Uh, so that's that's kind of how it works. Uh, there are some other uh, uh, cash flowing crops out there, but not not too many. Sure. Uh, you know, for our model, that's this this is how it's done. How do you project returns on something that's, that's going to be sold so many months from now? I look at the historical average. Um, I, I see what the price has been selling for, what we think the price is going to be, what we think demand is, um, what we think the crop is going to be. There's some really good, uh, uh, not just the USDA, but also some other research groups out there that are doing some really good uh, uh, reports on uh, for, for example, on almonds, uh, it comes to bloom. We have a bloom period and we'll look and see, you know, was it a good bloom time? Um, how many almonds are set on the tree? Um, and and, and we, we get an estimate of how big the crop's going to be. So we can, for a, you, you know, within reason, figure out what, what we think the crop's going to be and what we think the price is going to be. Obviously, it varies. You know, there's, there's so many different variables. Um, but... We, we get a decent idea and we, and we, and we put that over time because you, you, you know, in farming, this isn't a one year or two year, you know, you really want to look at it in a, in a seven to 10 year type of a model and look at it over that time. 
Uh, if you look at it at a year by year basis, you probably won't be too happy because you know there's too many vehicles. <laughs> that makes sense. So, explain the uh, just how it's structured a little bit. You know, you talked about like it, it going over five to seven year period. And a, a lot of investors that are listening are, are used to that even in multifamily. We're going to hold it, you know, say five to seven years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I- explain just how a deal like this is structured, uh, maybe even how the returns are structured as well. Sure. Uh, so for uh, I'm going to I'm going to use an example for the almond orchard we currently have on our uh, on our website. Um, you you buy into an LLC. The LLC owns the uh, almond orchard and whatever percentage of the uh, money that you put in will be the return that you get. Uh, So the LLC sees 100% of that appreciation of the land. Um, And we we look at an orchard for a 10-year hold period. Almonds have a lifespan of, say, 20, 25 years. So these trees are five years old. Um, so we're looking to see, you know, these, these trees really see the maximum potential of yield over the next 10 years. Plus, we're going to see some pretty good uh, appreciation in a 15-year-old almond orchard. If it's taken care of, we'll still have a uh, really good uh, resale value. So um, we're going to look at where the market is, you know, after, after the seventh year and say, okay, do we want to sell this year, next year? You know, how much profit are we making? What do we want to do with the ranch uh, over this this time period? We may sell on year nine. We may sell on year 11. We just kind of want to see uh, the feel of, of this asset during that time. But that's, that's selling a crop or that's selling the land? or That would be selling the land. So when we exit out of a, uh, an investment, we'll exit out of the, uh, the farm completely. Uh, that, that would be our goal. Um, it's possible we may not, depending on what the investors would like to do or what we feel we want to do. But that's that's most likely we want to capture that uh, that appreciation. So, so somebody that's coming in to buy that, if you've managed that well and now you have a a cash flowing crop there, I assume the value of the land is a lot more. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we want to uh, we want to capture as much appreciation as possible. Yeah. Uh, so it's been historically, it's been very good. Where, where do you most mess up when investing in, in agriculture like this? Hmm. Um, I, I think if you're, you're from the outside, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, investing in a uh, asset like this and you're not familiar, pretty much if you have to find the right, the right piece of property for whatever it is you're looking for. So I think most people mess up by uh, getting talked into something that maybe isn't a class one soil or, or wasn't a crop that was, uh, uh, maybe didn't have enough water. You know, water's a, 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 a big issue out here in California. There's, uh, or buying too high. That's, I've seen that a lot. You know, they pay, they pay whatever the market value is and it slips, you know, 10% because of uh, crop prices. Uh, I, I think there's so many variables to mess up. An outside investor should really look at who's going to be farming it and, and kind of the history of that farm and make sure that they're a reputable farmer or a reputable person. Uh, you know, even is, there, is there a way to, to, to know that, or maybe help us to find a good operator like yourself, or maybe some questions that we should even ask. So we know that, that they're, they know the farming operation. Um, I think you want to look at uh, the history of the farm. Uh, what kind of soil classes it's in and what crop is suitable for it. Um, so there's some USDA information out there that would uh, um, say, you know, you shouldn't plant an almond here. You shouldn't plant a vineyard here, but you could plant uh, pistachios or this crop here. You want to kind of look at what the soil is and where it's located. And you want to make sure there's enough water. Uh, you know, in the Midwest, uh, you know, we get a lot of uh, rainwater. That's kind of the, the method of irrigation. But here in California, uh, we're all uh, irrigated through a, a pump or canals and ditches. So you want to make sure there's two sources of water. Those are the, the first two things you want to look at. And you really want to just feel out the operator that they know, you know, what, what's going on. Kind of look at their history. What, what's a typical uh, investment range in, in something like this? Can somebody invest at 10,000 or is it a hundred thousand? What does that look like? So, we start off at 10,000 um, for our offerings. I would say 
you know, 50 to 100,000 is, is probably a, um, a, a normal amount to invest in something like this. Um, now, there are, when you get above 500,000 to a million dollars, you really want to start looking at owning a farm on your own and hiring that manager uh, and, and possibly, you know, uh, being able to dictate which crops are going to be put on that particular farm, um, which we offer a program like that as well. Anything over 300,000, we can uh, find you a farm. Wow. Yeah. Tell me about that. So if somebody has a large enough investment amount, you'll actually help them find a farm and, and potentially farm themselves? Correct. Yeah. So uh, in the crowdfunding uh, structure, it's very hard for a 1031 exchange uh, to happen here. So uh, anytime we get a, a, a large amount of money that people want to invest in a farm, uh, a lot of times they want it to be uh, – there, there are certain things that they want, uh, a certain crop that they may want, or uh, uh, they may be 1031 exchanging. And at that particular point, you know, we can 1031 exchange into a, a piece of property, you know, then the farm's named after X investor and, uh, and it's, they have a little bit more control over, over what's happening. What are the typical types of returns? You know, like a, I mean, do y'all do a preferred return or do you do a, you know, it's like a 70, 30 split, you know, like some typical structures do in, in commercial real estate. So currently that that's not how I have it structured. Uh, we like to, we're in it with the farmer. So I'm sorry, with the investor. So if you see a 30% return, that investor gets a 30% return. We're not taking uh, any kind of uh, preferred returns or uh, waterfall type situations. We're just, we're just not doing that. I'm not saying that that may not be something in the future, uh, especially when we get more sponsors uh, on board. But uh, at this particular point in time, we want it straight and simple. Uh, the farm makes X amount of money and what's left over goes, goes to the investors. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, I think in the commercial world, it can be done a little bit uh, easier. Some, some of those uh, types of setups because uh, there's a little bit more predictability. Um, but uh, uh, in the farming world, it's kind of, we're going to share, we're going to share the, uh, the upside and we're going to share the downside. Yeah. So, you know, we had uh, briefly talked about just how, how farmland has, it's proven to remain stable. And, mm -hmm. and you know, we could elaborate on that a little bit, just how it's uh, maybe over many years, you know, just how that's proven, to, how it's proven to be stable and why people are looking more to invest in it lately. Well, you know, it, the, the, the best thing about farmland, you know, especially when the markets kind of tank, uh, uh, it's a great inflation hedge. You know, we're, we're, we're essentially a manufacturer. So we're, we're producing a tangible product and it's, it, it's a product that we all need on planet earth to survive. So it's in demand at all times when the economy is up, it's in demand. And when the economy is down, it's in demand. So that's a, that's a good thing, especially, you know, and we see uh, like what happened in 2008 uh, when the dollar gets a little weaker, our products tend to really, uh, skyrocket because we're on a, a global uh, economy and and we're selling to uh, uh, places overseas that really like that our dollar has weakened. Um, we've seen commodity prices skyrocket during those times. So there's so many different ways, I think, for farmland and the commodities uh, that come off this land to, to benefit during economic uncertainties. Um, but it's, 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 it comes with the good and the bad. I mean, I'm not going to say it's the, the, the tell all, you know, the, the best uh, investment in the world. It's stable uh, and it's a long-term investment. Um, you know, for myself, I'm heavily invested in agriculture, but if I was from the outside looking in, I'd take a portion, throw it in the ag because it's always going to, you know, be stable and it's always going to be there. Population's growing. Um, we're losing farmland at a record pace. So, you know, at, at what point are, is that, is that going to uh, really catch up to us? So mm -hmm. I, I'm a big fan. So what's been the hardest part of this syndication journey for you, Brandon? I, I think the educational uh, aspect of it is, it, you know, getting, getting people to invest in such a traditional, unique asset 
through a non-traditional <laughs> method. You know, essentially you're investing in a farm on the internet, which is, it's, it's weird. It's, it's different. And, and I think there's a learning curve that uh, a lot of people, a lot of investors need to learn, um, which thank, you know, thank God the commercial world is really uh, kicking butt right now because it helps us. It, it helps people to uh, understand, you know, what's going on in apartments and, and, and other deals where they can look and say, okay, I've done this with this asset. Oh, I see farming has this same type of setup, you know. Uh, but it's just kind of hard. I think there's, there's still just a, I think we have a, a couple more years of really educating people how it works and, you know, what to do. What's the, the way that you've recently improved your business that we could apply to ours? <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, improved our business that you can apply to yours. I don't or know. Any way you've improved recently. It could be anything. Well, I mean, uh, for me, this is this, this whole journey of crowdfunding and marketing has been because we come from the agricultural side and not the investment banking side, um, you know, doing these podcasts and, and really improving um, our visibility online has been so crazy to me. I, I really look at um, how other larger companies are, are doing SEO placement and, and, and how everyone's getting to the top of the uh, search for these particular assets. And it's, I think we're improving marketing wise every single day. Hmm. What about, how are you finding investors for an asset class like this? Mostly the internet right now. So it's word of mouth and it's, uh, it's, it's keyword search. So, you know, one good thing about this, uh, if, if, if you want to invest in apartments, there's a whole list of people. Uh, if you want to invest in, in, in almonds, <laughs> it's not too many people. So we're lucky to get, you know, get, get in there and get, get on the first page and, uh, and really get interesting, you know, interested people that want this particular asset. So we've been very lucky. What's the number one thing that's contributed to your success? Oh man. I, it, it, my success in this particular uh, asset has it, got to be just um, one, I've been in it my entire life and two, passion. Um, you know, you've got to be happy doing what you're doing and, and I couldn't imagine doing anything else. So, uh, you know, the farmer is the uh, eternal optimist, right? We're, we're always optimistic and having that passion, I think, is, has uh, really helped our success. Hmm. How do you like to give back? Well, we, we do quite a bit with the children's hospital here, so that's that's kind of my little sweet spot. Anytime I can uh, do anything for for them, I'm in. Wow! Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for just coming on the show and sharing this new asset class with the listeners and myself. I know I've learned a lot, and I'm sure they have too. And uh, but but tell them how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. So the best way would be to uh, check out our portal, which is uh, farmfunder.com. And there's no E in there. So that's uh, F-A-R-M-F-U-N-D-R.com. Uh, or they can uh, reach me at info at farmfunder.com. Uh, email me. Check out our Instagram, Facebook. We're all over the place. Anywhere we should be, we're, we're there. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show, brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success. 